Hey guys, Winslow Bent here. Welcome back to this old truck. We've got a really special episode for you today. Behind me is a 1944 GMC duck boat. This is something that's from my own collection and has been in my family for almost 50 years. I'm really excited to show you guys this vehicle both on land and in the water. Let's check out this amphibious truck and see what it's all about. All right, so some basic things on the duck boat. This baby's about 31 feet long, six wheel drive. Well, how fast does it go? On land, maybe 30, 35 miles an hour, which is like plenty. I wouldn't want to go any faster. On water, about four or five knots. You'll notice that we've got this big flat front to it. It's kind of like a barge. This is just a cruiser. It's designed to have tons of gear in the back. When we get in the water, you'll see how high the water comes up and it's going to make it really stable because most of the weight is in these three big axles and that's going to make the boat sit nice and straight when you're going through all the chop. As you go down the side of this thing, there's some cool stuff to check out. First of all, wheel skirts. Every position has got a skirt. These have simple bolts that come up, exposing the tire if you needed to change a tire. But the duck boat was actually the first vehicle, at least the first vehicle that I know of, that ever had central tire inflation. And as you can imagine, in something like a duck boat, when you're going over all these different types of terrain, being able to increase and decrease your tire pressure is critical to getting the traction that you need to pull up on beaches, go through mud, go through coral. And then when you get back on the highway, you can pull that lever while you're moving, reinflate the tires and get up to highway speed. Now, the U.S. did not have any amphibious vehicles before the duck boat, so this is what they first cut their teeth on, and they did a remarkably nice job. Technically, this is called a D-U-K-W. That's where we get the term duck from. And what they did was they took the GMC truck chassis, and they said, all right, let's build a boat hull around the deuce and a quarter, throw a propeller on the back, and boy, isn't this gonna be great. The idea was that these were gonna be used in D-Day and then later in the Pacific Theater. So we had U.S. troops that needed to take beaches, get on land as quickly as possible. Where the duck boat comes in is not in that first wave of attack, but it comes in as a supply boat. So the soldiers hit the beach and then right behind that would come the waves of duck boats hitting the beaches, pulling up, and they're bringing ammo, they're bringing medical supplies, they're bringing whatever's needed, turn around and skedaddle back. And it was just much more efficient. This is all about the pace. And you have to remember, by this late in the war, not only was there a shortage of steel, but all the fabricators that would regularly do this type of job were off fighting the war. And uh, it was really the women that stepped forward and helped to produce a lot of these boats. So most of these were built by women, got it fabulous job. This was uh, all hands on deck, all people together, all working for the same cause. And then after the war, this was left in France on the Lend-Lease program. So France kept this thing and kept using it for another 20 years after the war. Along comes my old man in 1973 and he sees this thing parked there and he goes, oh my god, I've got to have it. Now, I'll tell you what, the old man's probably made more practical decisions in his life, but I'm not sure he's ever made a cooler decision. So he flopped down $2,000 of his hard-earned money, had this thing put on a semi, shipped up to Chicago, and this is where I spent my birthday parties as a kid, cruising around on Lake Michigan, parades. This thing has so many memories for me. Let's check it out. Hey guys, we've made it out to the middle of Palisades Reservoir. It's a beautiful day here. We found a little cove out of the wind 
and I wanted to take a few minutes to show you guys how a duck boat works. It's really a pretty interesting machine and there's a lot going on underneath these floorboards. We're gonna check out the engine, the air compressor, start working our way back to the transmissions, the power takeoffs, the transfer case, all the stuff that makes this thing work so well. So uh, let's go check it out. Okay guys, let's check out the engine compartment. This thing is a heavy, heavy door. So what we got here is a classic GMC truck engine. It's their 270, reliable. It's got very even torque. My guess is it's about 100 horsepower, a little over 100 horsepower. Torque is probably 200. As you go from the engine, we start working our way back. There are all of these different transmissions and gearboxes. And one of the things to remember is that each time you have a transmission, there's a certain parasitic loss. As we go through this thing, and you imagine little bits of power getting gobbled up each time, it's amazing that this thing moves at all. But because we've got such deep gear reduction, it actually works just fine as long as you're not in a hurry. There's nothing about a duck boat that is very fast moving. Let's go back, check out the transmission and how we get the power from the motor to the prop. The inner workings of the beast. Let me show you a few things on here. First off is this large drive shaft running right across the top here. That's your propeller. Below the uh, propeller shaft is the transfer case for the duck boat. That's gonna have well, what they call in and out, which is either you can run this thing as a four by four or a six by six. And then there's a high and low range. And again, only having a hundred horsepower in a 14,000 pound vehicle, uh, you're relying on a lot of gear reduction. I want a lot of torque. I want it on demand right away. So from the transfer case, bam, six wheel drive, bam, low range. That's gonna get me in and out of the beach. The original configuration that this boat sits in is so well thought out. It's really amazing that they put together something such an effective vehicle that it worked not only you know, D-Day, but you saw these being used in the Pacific Theater. After the war, National Guard, uh, disaster relief, um, explorations in the Arctic and Antarctic. These things have been put to the test everywhere and they just work so, so well. So now we're up in the cockpit. This is where the action happens. I think the first thing that someone notices when they when they look in here uh, is, is all the levers coming through the floor. It's just uh, a forest of levers. And what we've got is a, uh, a five-speed transmission. That is a non-synchronized transmission. So you're gonna be double clutching on the way down and you can float the gears on the way up. You'll see a red lever down here and that's the winch control. The winch is a power takeoff winch. So it's running right off the side of the transmission and it's gonna have yet another drive shaft that runs all the way to the back to run that 20,000 pound Braden PTO winch. Serious, serious piece of machinery. I see a beach. I think we can do a beach landing today and uh, try and really get a feel again for what that was like. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It was really fun going out on Palisades Reservoir in my 1944 GMC duck boat. We got a chance to drive it through the National Forest, really put it through its paces to see everything that this thing can do on land, on water. And I'll tell you what, the old girl does not disappoint. If you have something that you would like to see, please let me know in the comment section. Remember to subscribe, like, and ring the notification bell. We'll see you soon, thanks.